this module, uh, we will be basically looking at uh, some of the uh, uh, simple commands that we need to run to configure our Linux system for enabling the networking part of it. So, a system could really have uh, multiple uh, Ethernet ports uh, which are available. So, those Ethernet ports could be on the board or it could be uh, connected as an add-on card. Now, for uh, any kind of uh, port, whether it is a uh, networking port on the board or as connected as an add-on card, uh, there has to be a configuration that has to be done and this configuration is typically on a per port basis. So, for every port, uh, we need to basically set uh, the IP address, uh, we need to configure the default gateway, we also need to uh, uh, specify the subnet mask and uh, then finally, uh, bring the interface uh, up. So, what is referred to as a port uh, is, is sort of abstracted out as an interface from the Linux world and you will find that all the kind of networking configuration commands always uh, refer to something called as an interface, but this interface is nothing but uh, what we refer to a port in the physical form. So, the command ifconfig uh, stands for interface config uh, is the command that is very commonly used for doing the uh, complete network configuration as far as a Linux system is concerned. So, the ifconfig uh, command if we basically use the minus a option, the a here stands for all. So, if you use the minus a option, uh, it basically prints out all the details about the network interfaces that is available on the system. So, when we say interfaces available on the system, it essentially means what the different interfaces that have been detected at the hardware level by the OS when it was booted up and also subsequently. right? Uh, so, when you use the minus a option, if you for example, have uh, two ports, uh, two Ethernet ports available on your system. Uh, that is basically the RJ45 ports and let us say that your system is also having uh, the Wi-Fi capability, you will typically see uh, three interfaces listed here apart from what is called as a loopback interface. So, there is an interface name uh, called as an LO uh, that is typically standing for loopback. So, this is the interface that will be used by my IP stack to do a looping back of the data. Uh, whatever has actually been sent down by the higher layers uh, back up into the same higher layer. right? So, any kind of data that has actually been sent to the loopback interface will never get out of the system, but it will be looped back into the system to the higher layers of my stack. So, uh, depending on how many interfaces I have on my system, the physical interfaces that I have on my system, the output of the ifconfig minus a command will vary. If I want to specifically list down the details about any one interface alone, so I would say I have config uh, the, the, the name of the interface, the typically the default name of my first Ethernet interface is ETH0 and if I have a second Ethernet interface, the default name for that is ETH1. Okay. So, if you actually say I have config ETH0, it will give me the details only about the ETH0 interface. So, the details that uh, the ifconfig command will typically print is what is the address, IP address that has been assigned on the interface, whether it is actually right now up or not, how many bytes that this interface has uh, sent out, how many bytes it has actually received. right? So, every detail about the interface, so what is the MAC address of the interface and so on and so forth will be typically printed out by the ifconfig command. Now, if I want to specifically assign an IP address to an interface, I uh, would typically use the ifconfig command by ifconfig, the name of the interface. So, if I want to basically assign IP address to ETH0, so ifconfig ETH0 followed by the IP address. So, 192.168.0.100, so this will essentially uh, assign the mentioned IP address to this particular interface. And after which, if when the interface is brought up, any packet in the network that has actually been assigned uh, to the destination address marked as 192.168.0.100 will be received by this particular interface or this particular system. right? So, this is basically how I would go ahead and assign the IP address for an 
interface. Now, if I want to bring down the, uh, the corresponding interface, I say I have config ETH 0 uh, down. So, apart from the IP address here, I could also specify the net mask as an additional argument. I say net mask and then say whatever is the net mask that I want to set it to. Then I uh, basically uh, also give the gateway. Uh, so, what we mean by the gateway here is that uh, uh, every packet that is actually originating out of the system through this particular interface should be having a particular gateway IP address configured so that the packets out of the system will be sent into that particular gateway uh, IP address whatever has actually been uh, configured. So, how do I add this uh, uh, gateway? So, I have the route command for it. So, we basically say route, then we say what operation we want to do. So, here we want to add. So, what do we want to add? We want to add a default gateway. So, what is the IP address of the default gateway? So, then we finally specify the gateway IP address. So, 192.168.0.1 is the IP address of the default gateway on this particular system. Now, what exactly is the default gateway? Any packets, any network packets that is actually originating out of the system. So, if you are for example, running a browser, so you specify the URL as part of the browser uh, uh, URL field saying HTTP colon slash slash www.yahoo.com. Right? Now, the browser is basically going to generate an HTTP packet. So, this packet is actually going to go down all the way in my stack down into the IP layer and when it comes into the IP layer, it basically constructs IP datagram packet and then this packet when it comes down should basically be knowing where this packet should be sent to from my system. right? So, if this is the laptop on which I am originating the traffic, the packet, the network IP packet should basically know from this particular system where should it be sent to. right? So, that next hop that is basically what we call technically is what we configure here as a default gateway. So, all packets that are originating on this system in which this particular route command is being run will have the packet sent to this particular IP address that is getting configured as the default gateway through this command called route. Right? So, I say route, I want to basically do the add operation. So, what do I want to add? I want to add the default gateway. Now, what is the, deep, the, uh, the IP address of this default gateway? I specify that IP address as the next uh, argument in my command line. Okay? Now, the next option that we very commonly use with the route command is a minus n option. So, I could either use the route minus n option to basically list down the existing route or I also have an alternate command called net stat. So, if I use the net stat minus nr option, that command also in the system will be printing out the current uh, configured routes on my system in which I am running the uh, command. Right? So, this basically gives me uh, the mechanism by which I will be able to find out what are all the different routes that are being configured on my system. Among these configured routes, I will also be able to find out what is the default gateway because one of the routes will be explicitly marked as the default in my uh, table of routes. So, that entry will be taken as the the default uh, uh, gateway for all the packets that is actually coming out of this uh, system into the network. Suppose if I want to delete uh, the route, so I have an option by which I could specify del as the operation to the route command. So, here we said that we want to add, we want to do an operation of an add to the route command. Here, if you want to del instead of add, we say del of the route and what do we want to route, uh, uh, what do we want to delete here, which route we want to delete. So, it could either be the default route, the default gateway that was previously configured with this command or it could be any other uh, uh, route and we could specify the corresponding IP here. So, route del uh, of this particular uh, uh, network will delete that particular route in my list of routes that is available on the system. So, the set of routes is basically what determines how my packet is actually going to go out into the system. right? So, we will actually be talking about the, the routing part of it uh, subsequently in the course when we give you a very brief uh, overview about the network uh, layer in our stack. So, the next configuration that we would need to typically understand is uh, how can we actually uh, set up the remaining part of the network. So, once we actually set up the IP address, the, I, the particular port is set to become alive. right? So, till it the IP address is set and an explicit uh, bring up of that particular interface with the ifconfig up command is done, 
the, uh, that particular interface is not yet currently up and running. Once that is done, uh, the interface is all ready, but uh, it has to be now explicitly told what is the next interface to which the packets have to be sent by this guy and that is basically what we did with the route command. Now, once the route command is also established successfully, the physical connectivity is there, the next thing that we need to know is uh, what is called as a name server configuration. So, the domain name server, the DNS is a protocol that actually takes care of it, where the, there has to be some person, some protocol that is running to translate a machine name into a corresponding IP address and which, which is that? That is basically the DNS server, right? So, on my local system, I typically configure the DNS uh, server IP addresses in a particular file so that whenever any networking application is run on my system, they basically go and look at this particular file and the DNS client which, uh, which will start transparently running on my system will know what are the DNS server IP addresses in which this particular name, the domain name or the machine name that has been given by this application can be used for resolving the name to the IP address, right? So, we just saw, uh, talked about an example of giving a, a URL in the browser field, let us say www.yahoo.com. My network layer in my stack is not going to understand an English machine name or domain name of yahoo.com, right? It needs to know, it needs to understand, it basically understands only the IP addresses. So, somebody has to translate from the domain name of yahoo.com to the corresponding IP addresses and that person who is doing this translation is what is called as a DNS server, right? Now, where are the DNS servers available and that is basically what we basically in set in our file called resolve.conf available in the etc directory, right? So, etc as we saw before uh, in one of our earlier modules is the directory in which typically all the configuration files that are required for my system to function uh, normally is available, right? So, in the etc directory, there is a file called resolve.conf in which we could actually have a list of name servers listed, one name server per line, right? and then specify what are those corresponding name server IP addresses. So, any time whenever there has to be a domain name or a host name that has to be converted, uh, that has to be resolved to a corresponding IP address of that particular name, first line in which I have specified name server and followed with IP address, that particular server IP will be contacted and uh, given a request for doing this resolution. If that is failing for some reason, so that that particular server is not contactable, not reachable for whatever reason, I could also have any number of fallback options of name server configurations done in the same file. So, if for example, the first name server 2.217.19.192.132 is not reachable at any instant of time, automatically and transparently the DNS client that will be run on my system currently will go and try to resolve the uh, name to the IP address by contacting the second server that has been listed here. So, the name server is a keyword. So, following the name server uh, keyword, I specify what is a DNS server IP and likewise I could have multiple name servers configured in my resolve.con file for uh, fault tolerant purposes. So, just in case my first DNS server is not contactable or not reachable or is not giving me the response back, uh, automatically I will uh, have my DNS client uh, contact the next name server that has been configured in this file and so on till it finally uh, successfully gets the resolved IP address for that particular name, right? So, in terms of troubleshooting, what should we actually first try to do? We need to run a command called ping. Um, so, we try to basically, uh, whenever we find that we are not able to uh, access a particular server on the network, uh, we first try to troubleshoot it in the local network by trying to do uh, something called as a ping, right? So, ping essentially is a command that is used to find out uh, if a particular machine is uh, reachable or not on the network. So, when a, in a particular remote machine is not reachable, it is not necessary always that the remote machine alone is down or inaccessible right now. 
So, I could actually have the problem anywhere in my network path. So, typically what we do is we first try to ping the IP address of the gateway that has been configured for that particular interface, right. So, just a few slides back we configured the gateway IP address. So, we try to ping that particular gateway IP address to see first and foremost if our local gateway is reachable or not, right. So, assuming that is reachable, then we basically try to find out if our name server IP address is reachable or not. So, if the gateway is itself is for example not reachable, uh, then we know definitely the problem is somewhere isolated in our local network alone because of which our package is not even able to go to the next hop, right. Now, if that is reachable, uh, then we try to find out if my DNS server is reachable by trying to ping the name server IP address that was configured in the result.com file, right. Now, if that is reaching successfully, what this basically proves is that even my gateway is configured correctly and because of which my packets are able to get out of my gateway that is typically my local network most of the time and then reach even the internet successfully because most of the times again my the name server resolution IP address will be an IP address which is available only in the public uh, internet, right or at least it will be the IP address uh, which is actually placed in my uh, ISP site, right. Now, if, I, if this is also reachable, then we know accessing the internet is, uh, it seems to be fine, then we can possibly say that uh, there is a problem somewhere in the path from our ISP entry point to any of the hops it takes to reach the final uh, destination, right. So, in this way, we will be able to sort of troubleshoot to a minimal extent of where the problem could be really uh, present whenever we are not able to successfully reach the final destination machine. So, the problem could be either in our own local system, the problem could be alternatively in our gateway, the problem could be in my name server uh, IP address that I have configured in my result.com file locally and if the, there is no problem in any of this, then most possibly the problem could be in any of the network hop paths that my path that my packet is actually taking after the ISP's entry point to the final destination, right. So, thereby we basically try to get an idea of where the problem could typically happen by doing a sort of an elimination uh, of trying to test our reachability right from our local network to the uh, remote uh, right up to the uh, remote system and sort of isolate. Uh, where exactly the problem could be lying whenever we find that a remote system is not reachable from our local system. Thank you.